Hey, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, Facebook, how you doing? Blessings to you all. Thank you all. Shalom. Thank you to you all for tuning in. Uh, grace, peace, and blessings to you. Hey, Minister Casey, what's going on? Look forward to seeing you at uh, Shabbat service uh, on today. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Truly a blessing. Uh, I just want to come on. Hey, Brother Yasso, what's going on? I just want to come on. So the gospel just went forth in Pakistan and um, the video will be up. We did it via Skype. Um, I'm preaching there and I'm preparing to go uh, to Pakistan uh, in uh, by the summer of 2019. So um, they have a big crusade over there uh, with thousands of people. But um, the service just was awesome, man. I really appreciate it. I'm going to have Pastor Aziz uh, on my live later on today. Uh, we're going to talk about the service. Uh, and it was just powerful. Just preached the awesome word. Um, spoke to them and talked talk to them. Of course, uh, there's a delay that I had to get used to because of the translator. Hey, what's going on, Pop Curry? How you doing? Uh, there was a delay. So I had to get used to, uh, you know, not talking over uh, the translator, um, because of, you know, that was my first time having a translator, but it was awesome. The service was powerful. Um, it's very traditional. Um, um, the ladies sit on one side of the congregation and the men sit on another side, uh, of the church. And so, um, the women wear their head covered, um, as well. And this is, um, something that's powerful. Um, they, uh, say Jacob um, when we learn we're referring to uh, Jacob, and so uh, it's very it's something that's kind of you know interesting uh, and whatnot, and so um, it, it's it's very interesting. Um, they are a Christian church, but uh, a lot of the traditions and a lot of the things that they do is uh, very Hebraic um, in aspects, and so. Uh, of course, again, you know, these, to see the, all of the sisters, they wear head covers um, and whatnot. And we're not, we're not talking, um, not as far as the, uh, you know, the way that a lot of the sisters in Islam wear them, but it's more the Hebraic traditional um, a head covering um, that um, that you see um, in some, in some congregations. Um, um, it's, it's very interesting um, just to see, and they are a faith-filled uh, church. Of course, living in Pakistan, you have to uh, have a, a level of faith. I think sometimes uh, in other countries, uh, such as a place like Pakistan, there is, um, you know, an element to um, to that. Their prayers are very um, um, basic uh, when they aren't praying for. Uh, asking for prayer for a lot of things that we would ask for uh, in this country. Um, um, and so a lot of their prayers is geared towards, um, you know, healing in their bodies. And because many of them don't have the finances to go to a doctor, um, even though it's in the city of Pakistan, um, where they're at, uh, it's not one of the cities that is the most radical. They're not like they're in, uh, in Afghanistan or someone like that where it's more radical um they they have um they aren't the, my, the majority when it comes to uh, a bible believer but um they they are you know muslims around but but at the same time um you know they're just a faith believing congregation like um the word that you know i, I preach and we're going to have the video because it was skype they're going to uh, send me over the video so I can show you guys. Um, there was in um, at the end there were several people who came up for prayer, and one brother um, he had a he had pain in his hip, um, and this pain that he had in his hip, um, he came forth. He's an older uh, brother, and he asked for prayer, and so um, their faith is just so strong, man, um, and just it's just another level of faith. Um, that they believe. I mean, they when when you pray, they 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 aren't entertained by like big. It's probably the most basic um, teaching that I've ever done. Um, and I preached at um, white churches before, where they're more conservative and um, more 
um, you know, that many of us would consider basic. I preached at um, <clears throat> highly intellectual congregations where uh, the pastor is a shrew, a sharp theologian and, you know, several degrees and things of that nature. Um, but they aren't, that's not their situation. Um, very basic, like the basic of words uh, causes them to um, just respond to the word. Like it, it was, it's almost a shock for me. And I was, i be honest with you, I'm, that was, it's the most time I was nervous. I've ever been like nervous since the first time I ever started preaching. Um, and I was just, the nerve was because um, this was something new to me. It was, it was, um, I was out of my element. You know, of course, I'm just used to being, um, you know, making sure that I'm well versed, well studied, um, articulate. And I had to um, totally, and it just showed me that, you know, becoming all things to all men is a very uh, important thing. Even though it's important to Hamashiach, it's important um, to Paul, of course. Um, but that is, a, it's, it's, I, I got a thorough and complete understanding. Of course, over here in America, I'm used to the understanding of becoming of all things to all men. You know, some people may say Jesus and some people may say Yeshua. Some people may say Yeshua. Some people may love the deep intellectualism of conversations and theological discussions and discourses and all these things. And I'm used to dealing with those people. And I'm also used to dealing with, you know, the, the regular boy from the hood that just doesn't understand all that, but has a cultural understanding of being an America. Um, but there it's, it's totally different. It's like, it's the simplicity of simplicity, but their faith is so strong. And it, it I can't really even put it into words, like just the basic of basic. And it's, they're, they're listening and hanging on to every word um, that is being preached. And it's, they're listening with intention. Like they are in anticipating and they have the intention of listening to every word, but in the basic form. I was nervous. I had to talk to my wife and my wife, she, she gave me some, some, some guidance and just, just, I, she just really just said, you know, basically say, honey, you know, um, you know, stay away from illustrations and, you know, because they they culturally may not be um, understanding of, you know, sports or anything of that nature. So I had to, as, as the scriptures say, Abraham, listen to your wife um, in that capacity because I was nervous. I didn't, I, I just, one was the translator and two, um, the cultural, I, I, I had a presupposition of, um, you know, that, you know, how do I deal with these people? They don't, you know, they don't know, um, um, they aren't culturally there. And so my presupposition of them, um, gave me pause in my approach. And so, um, like always, it, it's just, it never fails. Um, when I begin to start to teach, um, I felt the presence of the Father. It, it always happens, even in the most likely places. Um, when I'm going to a place where I'm not comfortable, it's, it's the spirit rises up and comes upon me in such a way to where um, you aren't thinking about things and you aren't trying to put things into, and we're all human and we have those elements of, you know, want to make sure that I'm saying this properly, I'm dealing with this, but no, this was all spirit. It was all the Lord because at the end of the day, of course, there was a language barrier because you have the trans, the interpreter. Okay. Here, this is what we're talking about. When we start dealing with interpretation, interpreters in the scriptures, in the new Testament, there has to be someone, but yet when you start dealing with Acts chapter two, okay, when the spirit fell upon them, they begin to speak in those other languages. So therefore you have people in the earth who are gifted in the area of interpretation. Many of them don't even have to go to school, okay? 
but then yet they can turn around and they can interpretate, you know, and, um, you know, be the interpreter uh, for you. So therefore, this is a great, wonderful gift that the father has given us to be able to not only that, but the father in all his wisdom knew that once we were scattered into the four corners of the earth, knowing that um, he foreknew the creation of the internet and all of these things. This is why this is so powerful, where you can be on one side of the globe and witness and teach and bring healings to people on the other side of the globe that is seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve 10, 12 hours ahead of you. And yet they are there. They are dedicated and they are not only dedicated, but they are listening with the intent not to try to say, well, what is he? Is he teaching the truth? Is he saying the right thing? Did he just say Jesus? Did he just say this? Or did, no, they, they, are, they, they, don't, they don't care about that stuff. Okay. All they care about is the word. That's it. And all they have is faith. That's it. That's all they have. That's all they care about. They're not trying. They're not, they're not bugging out about all this stuff, all this other stuff. And so um, there was a brother there who had, he was an older brother, and he had pain in his hip. And so we began to pray for him, began to pray for him, and, you know, ask him to, you know, move his hip. And I didn't go into no deep prayers, and I didn't use no articulate words. I didn't raise my voice, and I didn't even have to touch him and lay hands on him. All right? None of that. Because he came to church believing already and knowing that I don't have nothing but God. That's all I got. And I'm coming here with this sole intent that I don't have money to go to the doctor. All I have is at this church. And this Bible. And if I can't get healed here, I ain't getting healed nowhere. Because I don't have money for a doctor. And this is how this is the this is how amazing this was. This is this is how amazing this was. This brother had pain in his body, in his hip. Now, mind you, I'm preaching. From Matthew chapter number eight. Okay. I'm preaching about the leper. And then not only that. I'm preaching also about the centurion soldier servant who's paralyzed. Let me take that. See. God is the master strategist. He's just. He's so awesome. Okay. I'm preaching from this message. Okay. They don't know. I'm preaching from this message. I'm preaching from the centurion soldier as well as the leper in Matthew chapter number eight. Okay. The leper we know that has a skin problem. After I preach the message, the first brother who comes up, he comes up saying that his wife has been burned and she needs healing for her burns. Okay. This she doesn't have leprosy, but she got a skin problem. All right, the, the video's coming. Okay, trust me, the video's coming. I know everybody wanted to see it. We couldn't do a Facebook Live. They use Skype over there, okay? I, I just want y'all to see this parallel here, okay, of what's going on, all right? I'm coming to preach. They don't know what text I'm coming to preach from. They're on the other side of the world. Okay, what they what what, what do they what are they getting out of this? It's not like somebody sending them some big check and some money. It's not like I'm a televangelist taking some money in the collection and and telling you I got the miracle soap and I got the miracle towel and the handkerchief and all this. No, oh, I don't have the miracle toast to crack or none of that. I don't have to lay hands on nobody. None of that stuff. Because faith activate. Faith and humility get your results. Okay? That's the moral of the story of Matthew chapter number eight. Again, it's a gut check. 
Where's your faith? Or do you have more faith in what you know or do you have more faith in God? Where's your humility? Are you arrogant? Because of what you know, who you know. Preaching about a man who has leprosy, a skin problem. The brother comes up, say, pray for me. My wife has been burned. She got a skin problem. The centurion soldier's servant has paralysis. He can't walk. He's paralyzed. The brother came up and said he has a hip problem. He can barely walk. All right, y'all. Like, come on, man. Like, this is, this, see, we, 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 we think, we seem to think that we actually move in God. We think that we can actually do something outside of faith. See, when you get to talk about faith and all that kind of people say, oh, that, you know, you know, I, I'm not going to even say what they say. Y'all already know what they say. OK, I'm not going to say it. Y'all already know what they say because I don't want to be accused of something. But y'all know by now. OK, you can't do nothing outside of faith. You can't do nothing. You can't give. You can't give to move y'all. You can't study enough to move him, because a whole lot of folks giving and don't have faith. Giving and don't have humility. It's a whole lot of folks studying and don't have faith. Studying and don't have humility. The Most High ain't moving. The man with leprosy has a skin problem. The brother who came up and asked for prayer, his wife is burned with a skin problem. The man, the centurion soldier who comes and he has an issue with his servant can't walk. He's paralyzed. The man who comes to the service, the older general, the old, older brother has a hip problem. He can barely walk. I didn't say nothing but five words in the prayer and ask him to move his leg. Ask him to move his hip. And the pain start coming. So I told the brother, hey, listen, do this. I want you to go walk from the front to the back three times. And as you continue to walk, the pain will begin to subside. It wasn't the instructions I gave him. He already had the faith to believe by showing up. He already believed. Because he can't rely on a doctor. He doesn't rely on Medicare, Medicaid, insurance, none of that. All of his faith is, I got the only, one, only way I'm going to get healed is in this service. That's it. I don't have nothing else. Didn't have to get deep, didn't have to pray long, didn't have to touch him, can't touch him. I'm on, I'm on, I'm on Skype. Brother walking back and forth. People clapping, praising the Most High. Yeah, that's right. I said praising the Most High. Since y'all think that's that's emotionalism, y'all think worship is a emotionalism. Them folks worshiping. You know why they worshiping? They are worshiping because this brother that they know had pain in his body. Now he's walking, no assistance. And as he continued to walk, the pain started relinquishing. Nothing deep going on. Nothing deep about it. No deep conversation, no deep prayers, no none of that. I didn't have to take up a tithe or an offering, none of that. All I asked him was, do he believe? That's it. 
Do you believe? But now, you know, this, this, this little Hebrew brother over here, you know, who, who believes he was a Hebrew and, and, um, you know, um, to some it's heretical, uh, to others, they think it's, um, you know, it, it's too emotional and all of this type of stuff. Okay. This unapologetically Hebrew, okay, who says Jesus from time to time that people got a problem with, um, who says God from time to time that people have a problem with, who says Lord from time to time that people got a problem with, okay, spoke five words, asked the brother, do he believe, and told him to walk, and he did it. And the people start glorifying the father. The sisters on one side with their head covered, glorifying the Lord. The brothers on the other side, glorifying the most high. And they in Pakistan with a language barrier, but they got an interpreter. That's it. So here's what I'll say. You keep doing what you do. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. That's not arrogant. It's not arrogant. I trust the Lord more than I trust you. And if a whole lot of other Hebrews trust the Lord more than they trust their teachers, they'll see some results too. Because you can't do this without faith. You can't do it. And if a whole lot of Christians will stop listening to their pastor speaking against nonsense, they would get some results too. Maybe this unapologetically unapologetic Hebrew, maybe if you look into what this Hebrew talking about, maybe you can get some results too. And that goes for you Christians and you Hebrews too. That goes for both of y'all. Because you can't do this without faith. Those people, faith will run circles around yours. And you got more than them. You got more, they, you have more than they do. You have more than they do. You ain't surrounded by no Muslims. Things of that nature. The man walked. No more hip problems. The man is going to go home and his wife is going to is, is going to be seeing results of healing in her body from her burns. Then there was another brother who came up and said his niece been married a year and a half and she can't get pregnant. The doctor said she's barren. We're going to wait for that result to come back to. There's another brother said he's jobless. And I had to remind him I say, do you have a home? He said, yes. Do you have food on your table? He said, yes. I said, the most I've been sustaining you. The most high has been sustaining you. He's going to bless you with finances. He's going to bless you with a job in Pakistan. But what you have to do is you have to totally dedicate your life. Sometimes things happen in our life that the most have to get our attention. But it shows you that it's not to destroy you because he still sustain you. He sustains you. You ain't got the job, but you still got a crib. You ain't got a job, but food still on your table. He said, look. Maybe if you dedicate yourself to me and not dedicate yourself to other people and stuff, maybe you'll be able to keep what I want you to have. But just as soon as you get off track, 
and you start making these other things more important, then therefore, I have to get your attention. And the brother start wiping tears from his eyes. The brother start wiping tears from his eyes. And it wasn't a get in order, get your life, get your life together. Did that, this, it, it, no, no, it wasn't none of that. It was very calm. But he knew what the situation was. And we're waiting on the testimony for that too. Pastor Aziz is doing a great job in Pakistan. I'm going to have him on my live later on. We're going to talk about the service. He also has the video. Okay, they're going to have a video. They took some pictures, things like that. And so um, he's going to be sending that to me and I'll, I'm going to put that up uh, on my page um, from the message and whatnot. And so um, I want y'all to understand something. That outside of here, there's some people that can show y'all some stuff. But the problem is you can't think you know it all. And one thing that people can teach you in other countries that don't have what you have is the how to have faith. We talk about Torah. We talk about the law, statutes, and commandments. We talk about feast days. We talk about all this stuff, but don't nobody talk about faith. Don't nobody talk about humility. And that is a big part of what moves the father. It ain't about your intellect. It's never been about your intellect. The Pharisees were intellectuals, but they couldn't move him. The, 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 leper in Matt, in, in the leper in Matthew chapter number eight, he wasn't an intellectual. The centurion soldier didn't care about his, his, his rank. All of that stuff didn't matter no more. I got faith. You say the word and my servant will be here. I don't have to see it. I don't have to be there. I traveled a distance to stand in the gap for my servant because he can't walk. So therefore, I'm coming to you because you are the only one that I believe that can heal him. So therefore, just say the word. I'm a man of authority. I understand how authority works. I tell men to go do stuff all the time and I don't have to be there to see them, see the orders fulfilled. So I'm taking this same approach. I don't have to be there. You say the word right now, and I know by the time I get home, my servant is be up walking. Hamashiach marveled. He marveled. See, I ain't seen this level of faith, not even in Israel. He said, wicked generation seek a sign. Who was he talking about? He was talking about Israel. Y'all seek all kinds of signs. This dude over here, this Gentile, he don't need to see nothing. And he just believe. He said, look, he talked to the crowd. He said, let me say, I ain't seen this type of faith, not even in Israel. And because of this, let me tell y'all something. He said that it's going to come a day. When people are going to come from the east and the west and sit down at the tables of Abraham, Isaac, why are they going to sit down? You can't sit with Abraham if you don't believe like Abraham. Abraham had faith. That's what moved God. It was the faith. Say they're gonna come from the east to the west. They're gonna come from the east and the west. They're gonna sit down. Look what it says. Matthew 8 and 11. Matthew 8 and 10. And Jesus heard it and he marveled and said to them, He said to them, He ain't said to the soldier who had faith. He didn't need to tell the soldier. But he said it to that crowd of folk who following. Y'all following and y'all don't even believe. 
It's bad to follow something and you really don't even believe. It's a whole lot of y'all following, but y'all really don't believe. There's a whole lot of y'all following this movement and this awakening, but y'all really don't believe. You really don't believe. You really don't have faith. You don't have the faith to believe. You're just following something because it's a fad, because it sounds good, and everybody doing it and all that. You really don't believe. The same way the multitude, the multitude in verse number one, the multitude was following. They, the crowd was always following Hamashiach. And every time he had a chance, he showed the crowd that you just follow. I'm going to give you something to talk about. I'm going to heal the people who believe who don't have what you have. I'm going to heal the people and I'm going to answer the prayers of the people who you look at as lower than you. Because you arrogant. You think you know something, but I'm going to show you. Along come the leper. Don't nobody want to deal with lepers. Do you know that lepers was they was the outcast? You can have an issue with blood and still be in the community. You get leprosy, you are outside the city gates. Don't nobody want to deal with you. Don't nobody want to talk to you. Don't nobody want to bring you nothing to eat or nothing to drink. And out of all these people in the crowd that follow, did nobody in the crowd even, even had any mercy or compassion towards the lepers? I'm going to show these jokers. Y'all following, y'all don't believe. But I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all how it works. I'm going to take the foolish things of the world that confound the wise. I'm going to go and I'm going to approach this leper. Y'all won't even approach the leper. You won't even say hey to the leper. You see the leper outside the city. You won't even throw them a bag to a lunch to eat. Because you don't care nothing about the leper. You don't care nothing about the leper. Those y'all view as lepers, you don't care. That's why y'all clicked up. You clicked up with folks because you look at other folks as lepers, so you click up with the folk that you think that's healthy. When really, the people that you clicked up with is more sick than the lepers. It's just that their sickness is on the inside. So Christ said, look, the leper... With humility. Don't nobody want to deal with the lepers. Don't nobody want to deal with the outcasts. Don't nobody want to deal with these people. Here comes Hamashiach on the scene. Here comes the leper. Humble. I'm out of options. I don't have nothing. Don't nobody want to deal with me don't nobody want to approach me don't nobody even want to talk to me nobody don't want to pay me no attention people walk past me merrily when they see me they frown the lepers oftentimes had their head covered and their body totally covered in garments and only had the eyes cut out of them and the mouth enough to talk. Didn't nobody want to deal with them. Maybe the people you're entertaining are the wrong people. Maybe the people that you entertain are the wrong people. He says, if you will, I know because I've heard about you. And I don't care but the crowd say they already talk about me. They already been talking about me. They don't pay me no attention. The only thing they care about is their own 
people that seem to be in good and health, that seem to be rocking the nice garments and, and hanging out with the crowd and hanging out with the top so-called leaders. So me running up on you, I don't care what they got to say. Because there's nothing that they can say that's going to hurt me more than, when I, than what I've been hurt already. So me running up on you, I know it's going to be a healer. Because there's nothing that I've heard of you that is anything like the crowd that's following you who don't believe. The crowd that's following you, they don't believe. In fact, they got all kind of things to say about you too. So we're in the same boat. But one thing I know that I believe, I don't have to follow you everywhere you go. But I believe, and that's my belief is displayed because I'm running up on you and I'm bowing before you and I'm honoring you. Christ said, it said he put forth his hand and he touched him ever so compassionately. He allowed the leper to speak about his problems, to speak about how others mistreated him. And yet, he listened before he responded. Maybe some of y'all talk too much. You talk so much, you don't even have time to hear people's problems. You love to be revered. You love for people to call you rabbi and teacher and moray. But you don't want to listen to nobody because you think you got all the answers. Christ mastered the art of listening. He understood that people have to get things off their chest. And then he responded. And his response was not like yours. His response was ever so compassionately. Compassion don't mean you soft. In fact, compassion shows the ultimate level of authority. It says he put forth his hand and touched him. And he said, I will. In front of the crowd. In front of a crowd of people. They didn't have time for the leper. They didn't care about if the leper needed something to eat or something to drink. He put on this show and display in front of these same folk who followed that don't even believe. They were just following because everybody else was. It's kind of like it is today. Many of y'all following just because everybody else do. Since he put forth his hand saying, I will be clean. And immediately, 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 his leprosy was gone in front of the crowd. And Jesus said unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priests, 
and offer the gift of Moses and command it for the testimony unto them. So Jesus was giving him instructions based on according to the Torah in Leviticus 14, as well as in Deuteronomy when dealing with the law of the leper. Leviticus 14 and Leviticus 13, dealing with the law of the leper. Things must be done in order. In which some of y'all, y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't care, y'all don't want no order. That's why you say stuff like, I don't need a teacher. You don't want no responsibility. You don't want no order. You don't want no accountability. How much Shiak is holding him accountable? Okay. You're a Hebrew. You know the Torah. You cleanse now. But guess what? It's still an order in place and instruction in place before you can come back to the community. The priest must examine you to make sure that you are clean. So that way, when they declare to the community you are clean, there will be no outbreaks. Go really read Leviticus 13 and Leviticus 14. Okay. Uh, Mooney, y'all, I'll answer that question a little later. I don't want to get off into that because that's not a, that's not something that I could just simply do um, in conversation. I don't want to get thrown off, but I'll, I'll deal with that on another note. Okay. And he says right here, he says when he came to Capernaum, okay, he dealt with the centurion. As well, you have a Hebrew is in a leper who got faith. You got a Gentile who got faith. When he runs up on the leper, the crowd is still following. The leper gets healed. He leaves from the leper and he goes to the Gentile. Or the Gentile approaches him, however which one of y'all want to say it. The crowd is still hanging around. And here come the Gentile. Here come the centurion soldier. Talking about I got faith. Christ said your own teachers don't even have the level of faith that the Gentile got. Is that the really reason why it seems like that these Messianic Gentiles, it seems as though they're getting more results than many of you? Maybe your focus is more on trying to know than believing. Hey, brothers and sisters, I'm not against education and knowledge. I'm not against that. I make sure I stay well-versed and studied up. But it's amazing how he would say, not even in Israel. you telling me none of them Pharisees? Of course, we know Nicodemus didn't. He was a master teacher. Nobody? you mean telling me the Gentile got more faith? He says, not even, he says, he says, listen, man, if you speak the word, I know he'll be healed. I don't even have to see it. I don't even have to be there. It says he heard it, which means, again, he was doing more listening than running his mouth. And he was teaching his disciples to listen more so than run your mouth. If you learn to master the art of listening, people will change because you will be able to get the full story, the whole conclusion of the matter to be able to give them some results that's going to help them. But if you just talking and running your mouth more so than you listening, you can't help nobody. Because your talking is only fueled out of your ego. As you think you know everything. 
That's why people talk more than they listen. Because they think they got all the answers to everything. Which is a form of arrogance and, and probably ego, egotistical problem that they have. Christ in his humility, he's just, he says he heard it. Same thing with the, with, the, with, the, with the leper. He was listening. Then he gave forth the result. He says he heard it and marveled and said to them that followed, not the centurion soldier. He said it to the crowd. Go tell your mores this is what he was saying. Go tell your bishop, your apostle, your pastor, your captain, your soldiers, go tell them all this. Because y'all are crowd and y'all love to run your mouth. You love to gossip. Go tell them this. Since you want to run your mouth so much. I say unto you. I have not found so great a faith. No, not in Israel. I can imagine the air left the crowd. <gasps> Did he just say what he said against Israel? Did he just speak against the Hebrews? Do he not know that God, that Yah, spoke to our fathers? Did he not know that Abraham, that Isaac and Jacob, did he not know that Amos said that he has not dealt so with any other nation. And yet he has the nerve to come after the bruise and say things like this. That this Gentile has more faith than us. Does he not know that we are the chosen people? Not this Gentile. Does he not know? That our forefathers, one who came through the Red Sea, did he not know that David is the king that slew Goliath? And yet he has the nerve to sit here and talk about this Gentile got more faith. And the crowd went back talking. He's too cozy with these Gentiles. He's always defending them Gentiles. He always going after the brews. Saying things, talking about this Gentile got more faith in all of Israel. Do, you, do he not know who we are? We are the ones who have the prophets and the commandments. Who is he? And as soon as they got an opportunity, it was because of statements like this. It was because of demonstrations like this. They would rather have Barabbas than the Christ. It's a whole lot of y'all would rather have Barabbas than Hamashiach. And as they did then, if your forefathers did then, if he was walking the day, you would do it again. Because he'll be making these same statements. And you'll be in the same position because you lack faith 
And because you lack faith, you don't have no spirit. The most high will is going to be done whether you like it or not. You don't choose for him. Who he chooses. You don't choose for him. The things. That should be said. He is the most powerful. The most intellectual being that we know. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. Nothing gets past him. He know your thoughts before you think them. He knew you before you was formed in your mother's womb, as he told Jeremiah. He declared the end from the beginning. There's nothing that you can get past him. And how dare you think that you know him and got him down to a science? He only told you what he wanted you to know. There's other things that he's going to do that you never will have revelation of. You know why? Is because he don't trust you to tell you stuff. He don't trust you to use you to the capacity that he's going to use others. And because of that, you get mad at his servants. You get mad at his, at his servants. Which one of the prophets have you not Persecuted Israel. Name one. We just read in Acts how they stoned Stephen. Stephen said the same thing. Which one of the prophets have you not persecuted? Then we had the nerve to say, well, if we was back then, we wouldn't have did this. And the prophet said, you, the prophet said, you are a liar. You would have did just what your forefathers did. Put him on the cross. Denied him. Because what you're saying ain't in your heart. The father has done a day in Pakistan and uh, what the father is going to continue to do is going to be even more. We haven't seen nothing yet. I've been telling y'all this for, for, for several years. I've been telling you a couple of years. We ain't seen nothing yet. We have not seen nothing yet and we haven't seen and it's going to totally shock and surprise us by the people he's going to be using. And it's not going to look like you want it to look. Get that out your mind. Most I don't think like you. Okay? Get that, get that out of your mind. Let that sink into your consciousness. He don't Think like you. You're carnal. He don't act like you. You're carnal. Get it out of your mind. Get it out of your psyche. Out of your being. He's going to see this thing. You know what he's doing? He, see, a part of the separating between the wheat and the tear, okay, a part of the second, a part of the separating the wheat and the tear, see, those who are weak, they're just going to live by faith. They ain't going to visit it. They're not just going to hang out, you see what I'm saying, just for a while and then dip. He ain't going to do none of that, no. Those of us who are the just that are going to live by faith, 
Okay? And I know that terminology of faith people, this, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that, that, that right there alone, when you start kicking against that type of stuff, that show me right there you carnal. Because you don't get it. Okay? The thing is that you have to understand. There is a component in which you, have, you must believe. There is a component of action that you must display. This is why faith and works go together. But if all you're thinking about, and let me tell you something. See, those are the type of people, because of their state of mind and their faith, those are the type of people that are enduring to the end. Y'all jokers who don't believe. Y'all jokers who caught up in intellect. Y'all 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 not gonna make it. Y'all gonna deny the Christ so fast your head gonna spin off. You are gonna decapitate yourself because you gonna deny him that fast. Those are the type of folks. I don't have nothing but my faith. Those type of folk that pray for it to rain today just so they can have some water, just so their crops can grow. Y'all so busy talking about Esau and everybody else, you don't even have time to even pray or talk about or talk about how good Yah is. You're talking about everything. You're talking about all the bad stuff. Every single, all day, every day, all you do is talk about bad stuff. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Let me tell you, do you... Listen, I've read the book. You think I don't, you, if you read the book, you know what's coming. I don't have time to be spending talking about all this wicked stuff. It's a time and a place for it. But my conversation isn't always, let me tell you, man, let me tell you something, man. Do you know during the time of the Inquisition, people rejoiced as they were going to death? They went right here. Oh, 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 hey, oh man, oh, man, man. Do you see what they doing? Did you see what they do? To, did you see what they do to, did to Steve the other day? Oh, oh man, oh man, man. Do you see? Man, the army's coming. Oh, they got this going. Man, listen, bro. If you read the book, you know what's coming. The book has already been written. Tell you what's coming. I don't have time to be thinking about all the devices that Hasatan got going on. You don't see that in the text. You don't see in the Old Testament they was always talking about Hasatan. You don't see in the New Testament they was always talking about Hasatan. You don't see in Paul's letters, Paul only probably pretty much only got one letter where he was all where he was dealing with some in-depth stuff about Hasatan. And that's in Thessalonians. Okay? Yeah, like one or two letters where he talked about the rest of the time he talking about faith. Because if you ain't got no faith, it don't matter what you know about Hasatan, you ain't going to survive. You see, the apostles, they was talking about faith, trying to get the people faith built up to endure until the end. But if you're talking more about the, the, the persecution, you're talking more about the vices of America and the more, more about these world leaders and what they're doing, more so than you talk about telling, building the people up to have their faith to endure, you hustling backwards, man. You hustling backwards. The people not going to be ready. You didn't see how much you didn't see Christ running around here talking about persecution and the devil all the time. Like this, this is what I'm saying. This is how I know people who don't read. This is how I know when people are selective readers. They selectively read, build a doctrine and a teaching around what they just only want to focus on. You're not a student of the word. You're a student of a subject. That's what you is. You are a student of a subject, not a student of those who are students of the word. We understand the totality of the word and we prepare the people in that manner. You are a student of a subject.
You're not going to school to get a degree. When you go to school to get a degree, you take multiple subjects. You are a you are taking an elective. That's what you you are a an elective taker. Every semester you taking an elective. You ain't taking classes that's gonna help you get a degree. You taking electives, man. You are a student of a subject who love electives. Electives ain't getting you nowhere. Most some electives not even credible. You can't even get credits for some electives. Some electives are, are, are don't come with credits, and some of them come with minor credits. That's not going to even help you graduate. You are take you are an elective teacher, a student of a subject. That's it. That's all you are. A student of the word, deal with this thing in and out. We take several subjects to graduate. And it don't make no sense. Y'all following these cats teaching electives. Man, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't have time for that. It's too much stuff going on. People don't even believe when they lose their job, they blowing their brains out. People leaving their spouses and all this kind of stuff over nonsense. You out here teaching electives. No, man, get out of here with that. Stuff got to stop. Sick of this mess, man. Be a student of the word. I'm about to get off here, man, before I get too heated and end up having to say some things. I, ain't, I don't want to go there. All right. Bless y'all, man. Um, I am going to be teaching the class again on uh, Kemet. We had an awesome class last night. Um, it was uh, the subject, okay, the subject. Uh, was on the life before Egypt and Rome, okay? And those of y'all who took the class last night, y'all know, man, we had a nice, nice group uh, took the class last night. Um, the class went on for about two hours, okay? But it was very in-depth. We started, um, I can't give you all of the information, but I'm telling you, it was power-packed with information. And it showed who actually doing the plagiarism uh, and the plagiarizing uh, versus uh, many saying, talking about the Bible plagiarized. No, 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 no. Now, we did some very in-depth things. We had videos, we had information, we had sources. We had all of these things. I gave some books out, uh, book information, uh, different things like that, dealing with ancient, dealing with uh, the Kemetic uh, and Pan-Africans. Uh, I showed uh, who were the leaders of the movement. We broke them down, uh, all of these things. So, um, brothers and sisters, you can have the opportunity uh, to be able to, hey, what's going on, Bishop Demetrius? How you doing, man? Uh, you can have the opportunity to take the course uh, if you want. Um, um, if you would like to, um, I would be, um, you would be able to view the course on Sunday if you want to register. The registration is $40. Uh, also, if anyone is interested in uh, the course uh, being taught at your congregation um, and whatnot, uh, definitely hit me up in the inbox. Let me know. Um, as well, um, it's definitely a very informative, uh, in-depth thing, but it's very, very, very uh, uh, um, important. It's solid. All of those things. We're going to be teaching other courses uh, dealing with things uh, like how to deal with non-Messianics. OK, um, we're going to be dealing with a whole plethora of subjects. Uh, we're going to be dealing some teaching. Also, we have uh, um, some of the gospel uh, before. Uh, European influence, which was uh, dealing with what did the gospel look like um, during the time before there was a, a Roman Catholic Church, okay, and uh, before there was a Constantine, uh, what was the gospels then? And so uh, it, it's very, it's, it's, we got a lot of different subjects that we're going to be teaching on, uh, dealing with um, with these different classes and courses. So if you guys want to be a part, it's cool. Uh, also, um, um, hold on for a second. Let me see. I'm trying to get. Hold on for a second. Uh, Pastor Aziz is here. Hold on. I'm 
I'm finna bring him on, actually. I'm trying to try to bring him on. Uh, now he just inboxed me uh, from Pakistan. Okay. Um, but um, we have a lot of different subjects and courses and things like that. Um, it is it is, it is taught on Facebook Live. Um, it's taught on Facebook Live, but it's in a secret group um, that we created. Uh, the registration is forty dollars. You can send it to dollar sign its majors and send me a screenshot of uh, the registration um, and whatnot. And that way, I can add you to the group for the course uh, and whatnot. So um, you guys can be a part of that. And this is this this is. Uh, um, I'm trying to make sure that I don't forget um, some things, uh, but um, that's pretty much it as far as with that. Uh, again, if you guys would like um, any other courses, also uh, we have the Truth Tour. Hey, Pastor Az Asha Aziz, Pastor Aziz, I see you here. Are you are you on a tap? Hold on, let me see if I can try to bring you in now. Hold on, let me see. All right, I'm. Bring you in from Pakistan. Hold on, it should be coming on here. I hope he can he can get connected. Come on, come on, come on. Sometimes Facebook, um, uh, hopefully we can get to get them connected. Uh, Pastor Z's, make sure that you're in a good uh, spot with a signal, because uh, sometimes if the signal is low, uh, it won't uh, allow you to come on. So make sure you're in a good spot where there's a signal. Okay, hold on. Let me try to bring you on again. Uh, hold on for a second. All right, so it's not doing it now. Uh, let me see. Where is um, Eric Reddick? Are you... Um, Eric Reddick, send me a friend request real quick. I want to see something. Uh, if you're st st on, still on, send me a... a uh, an uh, invite to come on the live. I want to try to see something real quick. See if I can bring um, Pastor Aziz back on. All trying to get him on. Uh, let me see. Here. So no. Hey, Pastor Z's, you got to get in a good, good area. Are you still there, Pastor Z's? And you're still there. Okay, let me see. Let me see if I can get. Okay. Hold on. All right, this thing is tripping now, hold on. Let me try to get this thing worked out. Uh, sometimes if you're not in a gray area, uh, sometimes it doesn't, um, the signal won't allow you to, hold on, let me see here. Okay, I don't think Eric's in a good area. All right, we're going to see if Pastor Z's is, is still on. I'm, I didn't get a comment back from him, so I'm going to bring him in uh, from Pakistan from the service this morning, and um, we can uh, talk about this, um, talk about the service. But, um, okay, back. It's not showing me. Are you on Are you on uh, a tablet or something? Can you send me a, a friend request? Um, but can you send me a request to come on the live? Cause I don't see an option for you, uh, Pastor uh, Aziz. I 
see you on, but I'm not. Uh, it had a signal at first. So I'm trying to see here. Hey, Shalom, what's going on, Brother Tatum? Hey, Sister Jeanette, how you doing? All right. Uh, brother, uh, is Eric Reddick? Eric Reddick, I don't know if... Uh, let me see something here. Let me try that. Okay, hold on. Okay, let's see. See, this is this is acting crazy. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can get Eric Reddick on. It's not even answering either. All right. Yeah, I know, Eric. I just seen that, and it's not. Um... I'm good, man. Sitting here tearing up this bacon. Should have known that the minister Casey, man, he is he is uh, uh, assistant minister at our at our. Uh, at our. All right, hold on. Let's see, uh, uh, Pastor Aziz, see if you can send me. A, I think what's happening is it's not an it's not a good signal. Um, if um if it's not a good signal, then it won't allow you to come on the live. So you have to get in a place where it's a good signal, um, to be able to come on. So. Uh, just send me another request uh, to come on the live, but you have to be in a good spot um, to be able to, to get the signal. Uh, so, let's see. Eric read it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Beat Bros. Cases, man. That boy, I should have known it was going to be something dealing with him. He always clowning. Uh, Let's see here. Where is uh okay, uh brother Aziz, you might have to go out and come back in. Eric Riddick, you might have to go out and come back in as well. Um, so we can try to get the signal. Sometimes you have to do that on Facebook. Um you have to go out and come back in. So I'm trying to trying to make sure I get him uh on real quick. I know it's uh it they're ahead of us over there. You got to turn the device landscape mode as well. Okay, Pastor Aziz, you have to turn your um, your phone or your tablet, you have to turn it uh, horizontal or landscape, meaning if it's this way, you have to turn it this way. And then you hit the, then send me the request. So you have to turn it this way. Okay, horizontal versus this way. You can't have it this way. You have to turn it this way. And then that way you should be able to send the signal. Uh, Cause when I sent you the signal the first one, first time, uh, there was a signal there. But if it's not sideways, hold on, let's see. Uh, e Riddick, it's not on for some reason. They ain't letting me bring you on, man. I may have to um, jump off and jump back on. Uh, and then we'll have Pastor Aziz on there if it doesn't work this time.
All right, I'm sending brother uh, brother T a a friend uh, answering his. Let's see if Brother T come in. Okay, I think I see Brother uh, Aziz is, okay. All right, let's see here. Uh, Brother Aziz, let me see. See if I can get him in. All right, Brother Aziz, I'm adding you now, so it should it should come in. All right, you should be good. There you go. All right. Hello from Pakistan. Hey, what's going on, man? Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. Shalom. How are you? I'm I'm great. I'm wonderful. I'm talking to everybody uh, about the service and how things went and how powerful it was and and it was just an awesome experience. How how about you guys? What do you what did you think about how did the Lord, did the Lord do a great job today? Yes, it was awesome. And I really personally was really blessed. The message was so profound and such a wonderful uh, way of presentation. And like uh, first one, the Jews, and the second one was the, you know, Gentile. And it applies you know, in our situation as well. So we were nothing. We were like Gentiles, but Jesus came to us on this earth and he loved to us and he healed us, not only physically, but first of all, in our hearts, in our personalities, he healed us. And this message not only applies onto my life, and not only to my family life, but it also applies to Pakistani nation as well. Because not only this message is for the church, because church is now thinking they are like Jews. You know, the gospel is for them only. But the gospel and Jesus is not only for the church of Pakistan, but it is whole country of Pakistan. So the country is like representation of a Jew, uh, of a Gentile. And Jesus is going to heal this land and heal these people of Pakistan. And uh, I, I believe that it's prophetic message. And I received it by, by heart. And God is going to do something great in this country. Amen. Thank you so very much. Amen. Pastor Aziz, now let me ask you this: um, uh, How did how did you um, what what prompted you to invite me to speak? Um, I know we've been knowing each other or been following each other for uh, some time, but what 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 um, gave you the the confirmation to invite me to speak? Actually, uh, as you know, that Dr. James White, we have a mutual friend, Dr. James White. So I was such, I was just uh, looking, I was looking at his profile and I saw you and uh, I, uh, I really saw your profile and I saw that how wonderfully God is using you for his glory in your country. And I heard uh, your sermons and I saw your work that uh, you are doing such a wonderful work, especially the conference uh, that uh, I, I think that one on one conference. James one and one, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was it was wonderful uh, region that God has gave you uh, for your country. So I was really blessed and Holy Spirit told me to invite you to Pakistan. And after that, God spoke to me that even I should invite you to come online that he it is the gift of God, this technology, it is the gift of God. So God told me that use that technology for you as well. So I, I would like you to, at that time, I would uh, talk with you. I talked with you about to preach in Pakistan online. And I believe that 
it is divine connection god really wants to do something in pakistan through our fellowship so through for you so it is just the beginning today as you saw a seed in pakistan in the hearts of the people and i believe that god is going to do a big things in pakistan through our fellowship in near future as Amen. it is not it is it is not your desire it is not my desire it is not your will it is not my will it's god's will yes it is god's will that's why today god make it possible for you to come online and share the word of god the blessed sermon with the people and we even we have testimonies we have recorded testimonies from the people and soon i will made a video clip and share with you on facebook amen amen that's that a de definitely a blessing to even our people um over here and we in america and i think that is is truly indeed a blessing what what god is doing um and there's no barriers no distance he answers prayers uh, even if you're on one amen. side of the earth and others on the on another side he's not there's no barriers that can stop him and all we have to do is just believe and have faith and so uh i'm so excited about what we're doing and and uh you know becoming brothers in the faith and and things of that nature um now let, let me ask you this um because a part even a part of our custom we bread culture things like that um we have women in our congregation uh, that, that wear, uh head coverings and so I noticed that in your in your congregation they had head coverings as well. So uh, yeah. explain that uh, that that was a uh, it was it it brought joy to my heart to see that, which was uh, something that even my grandmother um, uh, she when she was alive she wore you know things a hat or a head covering. Uh, so explain that that was that was interesting. Actually, brother, this is. Uh... uh not only the teaching of paul you know in first corinthians so the this situation was uh brought up to him and he said that uh, you need to cover the uh, their heads the women should cover their head so this is not only that teaching we are following in the church but this is also the impact of uh, islamic culture the country's culture to our system as well right you know uh, it's an islamic world islamic country the second uh, biggest islamic populated country of pakistan you know the first one is indonesia in the world and the second one with the population is pakistan so you know islam teaches that um, women should cover their head you know even their faces you know they should have a uh, uh, you know scarf everywhere so we are respecting their culture as well we, so that's why our girls they are covering their head so there are two reasons uh, why uh, our women are covering their head the first one we are respecting god you know the laws of god the bible is the paracultural bible there is no other culture in the world which is supreme to the bible's culture so the That's first right. one is this and the second one is that we are following uh, the country's culture as well we are respecting actually we are showing respect to their culture as well it is it is also our culture east as we are living in east and it is our culture in pakistan even uh, it is uh, in uh, in our culture when someone is old he put his hand on younger one to give love mm. like this like right. this like this so it is our culture in pakistan okay let me let me ask you this uh, as well um because i know there was a lot of people you know that a lot of brothers and sisters over here who are believers uh in Christ and they as they may you go are you going to Pakistan are you going to back as i say i said we we're, we're planning to go in 2019 but also i'll be teaching on Skype so it's a lot of fear of uh so kind of explain to people um 
um, you know, because they fear, well, you know, over there, you know, you go to Pakistan, people are getting, you know, all types of things, the horrific stories that you hear. Explain to them uh, how Pakistan is by being Christians or Bible believers in Pakistan. Do you have issue with Islam culture or or do, do they bother you? Do they say you can't preach the gospel? What is it, what is it like there? Uh, dear brother, your name is William Brown. Yeah? Yes. So you are brown, like us. <laughs> <laughs> so nobody will recognize you when you, <laughs> when you will be in Pakistan. Nobody will recognize you, whether you are from Europe or from America. Uh, yeah, so uh, the second thing is that uh, our Muslims, uh, brothers and sisters, they love the other people as well. You know, some are radicals. We admit and we believe that and we cannot deny from that. There are different sects. Those are radical, those who are having radical teachings. But, you know, most of the Muslims and uh, throughout the nation, throughout the Pakistan, people are very respective. People are very, you know, loving and uh, they credited what America is doing for Pakistan. And we receive our guests. There is no problem. Even when you will come to Pakistan and we will bring you here and there and we will have different uh, meetings in different villages. And you will see that how many Muslims they will come to you for the prayer. You will recognize, you will see, and they will admit that we are Muslims but we come to your Christ, your Jesus for healing because wow. we believe that Jesus is a healer. Wow. Even you can, you can see uh, one of our video uh, for last crusades that we did uh, last crusade. There are testimonies of Muslim people in that crusade video that they get healed in the meeting. Wow. Wow. That's that's power. That's so power. we have we have full freedom in Pakistan. Wherever we want, we can do a crusade. How big we want, we can do crusade. Yeah, but you know, in in, in restricted areas, in different areas, uh, uh, you know, some areas are restricted. We cannot have Christian meetings over there. Right. Uh, but we are doing tactfully with the wisdom of God. And, you know, openly we cannot preach. Openly we cannot distribute the handouts. Christian literature, we cannot give. We cannot invite people to accept Jesus Christ openly. But, you know, in the meetings, when, uh, you know, the police will be there, the officials will be sitting in your meeting and uh, they will give you full protection. And uh, the most, the biggest protection is God's angel and the blood of Jesus is always with us and he is alive. Jesus is alive and the Holy Spirit is always with us. So we believe that there will be no problem when even, we will be in Pakistan. Even Bible says it's God is with us who is against us. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, what is the, because I was talking to um, a lot of brothers and sisters earlier before you guys came on, and I was talking about the level, just the level of faith. And uh, in America, we are we thrive on a lot of um, um, education with the Bible and teaching a lot of those things. And I um, I felt as though I was kind of nervous at first. This was like the first time I've been nervous, and um, and the reason why I was nervous because of um, I was thinking culturally and generally when I'm teaching, I teach a certain kind of way, but I wanted to bring it down and make it as simple as possible. And, and, and the spirit took over. Um, how is the level of faith? Talk about the faith that you guys have in your congregation. You know, our church is like uh, 25 years old church and uh, pastor aziz 
he was the founder and he was the senior pastor of this congregation. He actually started this church with the help of the Holy Spirit. And uh, this is a Pentecostal church. And we have seen many miracles in this church. And, you know, we are the second generation. We have mm. been born this in this church. And, uh, you know, and uh, we are seeing the third generation to our children as well, to our disciples in this church. So our church level of faith is, you know, uh, I would not say that it's quite high, but it is on a medium level, on a okay. medium level. But we believe that uh, Jesus uh, is alive. He is risen and he always uh, with us whenever we call him. He comes always by the, uh, you know, Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit moves in this church and our people are full of faith. They are speaking tongues and uh, they are worshiping the Lord uh, in, in, a, in a free mood. So sometime, you know, uh, people are getting their healing and miracles. So we have we do not have problem of faith, actually. So there is a level of faith. Amen. All right, let me ask you this. Um, it, was, it, was, it was striking to me because as I was preaching today, um, when we began to have prayer, um, and, and as the brothers was coming forth concerning prayer, it, it stood out to me the message that was preached today of dealing with faith and humility that gets results, um, how the leper had an issue with his skin. Yeah. The centurion soldier servant had an issue with being able to walk. He was paralyzed. And today there was a brother who came up for prayer and his wife had a skin problem. She was, yeah, you know, yeah, she was, and, and it was, it was so powerful how the spirit lined that up with the message. And another brother who had pain in his hip, you know, yeah. every time he walked, and the centurion soldier servant, he couldn't walk. And it was wow. amazing how the Holy Spirit lined it up uh, for that message of faith and hope for two situations. What, what, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, first of all, you know, when they came and the, the first one, the burnt lady, he was talking about his wife. So I, my, my, my mind went also aligned with the gospel, with the message you shared. And the second one, when the, the other person, the old guy, he came and he said that I have a problem in my hip, you know, a problem of walking. So, you know, I was also uh, feeling that it was a confirmation of God, what you have been sharing. You know, as Jesus healed the, the leopard one, so Jesus is going to heal that lady who is sitting in her house, but she is burned, she is suffering, and she is like uh, outcasted. She, she didn't come to the church because of her sickness or because of her skin problem. So God is going to heal her. As you said that, brother, you are standing here, but I believe that God's spirit is touching her wherever she is. And the second one, when I heard the, the old guy, he said that I have problem in my hip. So, you know, I, I was truly, uh, my heart, you know, felt big. Uh, I was feeling big in that uh, sense that it was a prophetic message. And God brought those two type of people as an evident to the congregation that whatever he says, his word comes to pass. Yes. He is a miracle wonder working God. And yes, he. whatever he did 2000 years ago, when he was on the earth in a physical form, he can do 
the same miracles right now when he's not on the physical form in this earth, but through his spirit, he can do that. Amen. Pastor Ziz, you was, you, you was going to say something? Uh, I hope I didn't lose him. Okay, there they go. Pastor Ziz, were you going to say something? Yeah, uh, we are uh, thankful to you uh, to giving us your precious time and we would like to request you uh, to hold such kind of meeting uh, in once in a month or twice in a month. It will be a blessing for people of Pakistan, especially uh, at different places. We should go to different places. There okay. are lots of places. Can you believe that there are lots of places there where there is no church at all? There is oh, no yeah. church at all. Even uh, Muslim priests are doing funeral and marriages of Christian people over there. Wow. So most of people have no chance to hear the word of God here in there are many places in Pakistan, especially like brick clean, brick factories. Those people are slaves over there at brick oh, factories. Man. So generational I, slaves. They are generational slaves. Like some people are uh, uh, slaves over there from fourth generation, from five generations. So they have no chance because they cannot go anywhere. They are slaves over there. So I would like you to invite you to uh, standing in gap with us and agree with us in prayers so that we can pre prepare our team. We should have a strong team. We should go every month, twice in a month uh, uh, to different brick factories to preach the word of God over there with full equipment. Like yes. our team should be very strong. Our setup will be set over there, should be in order. Everything should be in order. So our team uh, go ahead over from us over there to set all these things so that we could hold meetings on brick factories of different uh, uh, brick factories of this Punjab area. Even uh, if we can just cover the Punjab, it will be great because Pakistan is big. Okay. So we should cover the Punjab. Punjab is a province where we are living. So first we will win the souls in Punjab. Then we will go to different other areas of Pakistan. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, we'll definitely talk about that um, in looking at the calendar and things like that and whatever you guys are, are needing and trying to do. Um, but I want, I want definitely want to go back to um, the uh, older uh, brother with the hip. Um, I noticed that you know, we didn't have any long prayers, uh, anything of that nature. It was just, you know, a few words, but he began to move his leg even before after, uh, even before we ended with the prayer. So how, when he began to move his leg, I know he said he had pain and the pain was heavy, but then all of a sudden it, it began to start decreasing. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end, you know, uh, end of the meeting, I asked him again, so where is the pain? He said that there is no pain. <laughs> I am released from the pain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. Yeah. I told him to keep, I told him to walk, you know, three times yeah. back and forth. I, yeah. Did he say something that was yeah. funny or something? I, I kind of heard people laughing yeah. or something. Actually, he, he started to laugh. And actually, the, there was unbelief like unbelief there was so i asked i told him that as naman the leopard you know he thought that you know seven times in a in a dirty water the prophet was saying that i should dip myself in the dirty water so how it could be possible that i could be cleaned so i said when you believe that uh, the man of god said that three times Come and um, come back and uh, you know forth, so you will get healed. So you know at the second time he he stayed over there. I said walk, <laughs> come back, <laughs> you know. So he he came again. So then at the end he said that there is a little pain. So when you know at the end of the meeting I asked him again where is the pain. He said that there is no pain. I am totally relieved. I am Praise totally God. released from the pain. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. I, yeah. I, mean, I said, you Hallelujah. believed uh, uh, the, the word of the man of God, so you, you were healed. If you couldn't believe the word 
which has been spoken by the prophet of God, you would not be healed. Right. Amen. Amen. You guys are doing some great work. I am so excited and happy for our connection. Um, and I told I definitely... to Pastor Asher that I told to Pastor Asher that when you come to Pakistan, we will give you the shirts. Oh. Like the, <laughs> Pakistani clothes. Yeah. <laughs> I got about, you know, I started to wear one of my shirts when I was preaching, but I said, no, nah, I'm not going to wear my shirt. I'll wear it at another time. But I have several of those type of shirts, and I would definitely be wearing one to Pakistan. But I would look forward to getting some from Pakistan as well. <laughs> all right, right, all right. So let us know so that we could uh, start pray for your arrival if in 2019, uh, okay. some estimated month, if you have any, like in Pakistan, uh, March, April, and half of May. It's a season of open air meeting. Okay. And then uh, September to first week of November. Full okay. September, first September to half of first week of November. It's a open air meeting season, like not hot, not cold. So these are the uh, actual season of open air meetings in Pakistan. So we should start pray for your arrival and God's will and perfect timing for your arrival. Absolutely. I'm definitely looking forward to it because I think it'll be good if we can get um, some of the other uh, uh, pastors who have spoken um, um, to you in your congregation and if we can get together and all of us do a crusade um, or something like that together. And we'll, we'll talk about that as well. But what I need you to do, if possible, you know, inbox me the information that we talked about earlier so that way I can... Um, I can go ahead and, and, and bless you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, brother, uh, please, uh, I would like you to pray uh, before you leave, pray for us, uh, for our ministry. And especially uh, on, on this Christmas, we are going to help some brick factory slave children. So okay. uh, agree with us in prayer so that we could reach to them and give them real joys on this Christmas. I got you. Okay. All right. Let's bow our heads and pray. Uh, Father, we yes. just thank you right now. We thank you for this connection. Um, I ask the Father that you would go forward with these two brothers, these two servants, these two pastors, these two men of God, and bless them, Father. Bless them with the abundance of health and strength. Holy Spirit, protect them. Uh, put your protection all around them. But not only that, Father, bless them with the provision. Bless them with the finances to be able to do your ministry work. Father, there are people that they're dealing with on their engaging that don't have uh, food, that don't have places to stay, that don't have clothing, don't have any of these things. And Father, they have great hearts. They want to do your will. Father, watch over them and protect them. Father, and even though uh, touch them, that allow them to be able to bring joy into the heart of the slave children uh, this coming December, Father. Father, bless them, uh, bring joy to their lives, but not only that, but bring the gospel message as well to them. Father, we pray these things, not uh, just out of prayer, just to, just to pray, but we pray these things because we believe, not out of cliche, but because we have faith and we believe. Yes. Father, I pray you now to watch over their families, uh, make sure their children have health and strength, their relatives have health and strength. And Father, yes. their church. Father, let their church explode and, and, and grow yes. and, and, and yes. be a healing uh, to the people there. Let the Muslims uh, come to know you. Uh, let all of yes. those that maybe that don't believe in the in the Bible and the finished work of Christ, let them also mm. have faith and believe. Father, not only that, yes. but Father, move through their hands that they may have signs and wonders. Uh, let the signs and wonders that follow them, not for their glory, but for yes. your glory. Father, we pray these yes, things Father. your son, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. We pray these things and both all we all three agree and we all say amen. 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 All right. Um, if anything else, that's it, man. I just wanted to bring you guys on. I really appreciate it. It was definitely awesome. And I look forward uh to doing doing much many more work uh for the kingdom. And so we'll be talking getting ready for 2019 and a lot of other things. And so uh, I'll definitely talk to you guys soon. Be blessed. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. God, God bless, bless you. you. And we love right. you. Love you as well. Grace to you.
All right, brothers, that was it, man. I'm going to get off of here and go spend some time with my family. Uh, we have a service later on. Uh, continue to uh, stay in prayer, you guys. Keep um, keep uh, our brothers Aziz uh, and his church in prayer uh, that they uh, may continue to do the work. Um, they are definitely some great hearted brothers and they're definitely trying uh, all that they can to do the work uh, for God's kingdom. And so keep them in your prayers. Uh, pray that they are able to have the finances to be able uh, to do the work uh, of the kingdom as well. Uh, as many of you guys know, it does take finances, especially when you're trying to bless a people and provide for people that don't have. All right. And so make sure you guys keep them in your prayers and love all of you guys with the love of Christ. I'm going to get off of here and uh, I'll see many of you guys later on. Boom Church here in Atlanta. Uh, as well as my Boom Church Jacksonville family. Bless you all and see you all later. We have an awesome, awesome message on tonight at, at, at church. And so grace to you all.